22 million black victims of Americanism are waking up and they're gaining a new political consciousness, becoming politically mature. And as they become, uh, develop this political maturity, they're able to see the recent trends in these uh, political elections. They see that the whites are so evenly divided that every time they vote, uh, the race is so close, they have to go back and count the votes all over again. And that, that, which means that any block, any minority that has a block of votes that stick together is in a strategic position. Either way you go, that's who gets it. You're, you're in a position to determine who go to the White House and who stay in the doghouse. You're the one who has that power. You can keep Johnson in Washington, D.C., or you can send him back to his Texas cotton patch. You're the one who sent Kennedy to Washington. You're the one who put the present Democratic administration in Washington, D.C. The whites were evenly divided. It was the fact that you threw 80% of your votes behind the Democrats that put the Democrats in the White House. The, when you see this, you can see that the Negro vote is the key factor. And despite the fact that you are in a position to, de to be the determining factor, what do you get out of it? The Democrats have been in Washington, D.C. only because of the Negro vote. They've been down there four years. And all other legislation they wanted to bring up, they've brought it up and gotten it out of the way, and now they bring up you. And now they bring up you. You put them first and they put you last. Because you're a chump. A political chump. In Washington, D.C., in the House of Representatives, there are 257 who are Democrats. Only 177 are Republicans. In the Senate, there are 67 uh, Democrats. Only 33 are Republicans. The party that you back controls two-thirds of the House of Representatives and the Senate, and still they can't keep their promise to you, because you're a chump. <laughs> Anytime you throw your weight behind a political party that controls two-thirds of the government, and that party can't keep the promise that it made to you during election time, and you are dumb enough to walk around continuing to identify yourself with that party, you are not only a chump, but you're a traitor to your race. <laughs> and what kind of alibi do they come up with? They try and pass the buck to the Dixiecrats. Now, back during the days when you were blind, deaf, and dumb, ignorant, politically Im immature, naturally you went along with that. But today, as your eyes come open and you develop political maturity, you're able to see and think for yourself. And you can see that a Dixiecrat is nothing but a Democrat in disguise. You look at the structure of the uh, government that controls this country. It's controlled by 16 senatorial committees and 20 congressional committees. Of the 16 senatorial committees that run the government, 10 of them are in the hands of Southern segregationists. Of the 20 congressional committees that run the government, 12 of them in the, are in the hands of Southern segregationists. And they're going to tell you and me that the South lost the war. Today have are uh, in the hands of a government of segregationists, racists, white supremacists, who belong to the Democratic Party but disguise themselves as Dixocrats. A uh, Dixocrat is nothing but a Democrat. Whoever runs the Democrats is also the father of the Dixocrats, and the father of all of them is sitting in the White House. I say and I say it again, you got a president who's nothing but a southern segregationist.
from the state of Texas. They'll lynch you in Texas as quick as they'll lynch you in Mississippi. Only in, in Texas, they lynch you with a Texas accent. In Mississippi, they lynch you with a Mississippi accent. And the first thing the cracker does when he comes in power, he takes all the Negro leaders and invites them for a coffee. To show that he's all right. And those Uncle Toms can't pass up the coffee. They come away from the coffee table telling you and me that this man is all right. Because he's from the South. And since he's from the South, he can deal with the South. And look at the logic that they're using. What about Eastland? He's from the South. Make him the president. He can, if, if Johnson is a good man because he's from Texas, and, it, and being from Texas will enable him to deal with the South, Eastman can deal with the South better than Johnson. No, I say you've been misled. You've been had. You've been took. in Washington a couple of weeks ago while the senators were filibustering. And I noticed in the back of the Senate a huge map. And on this map, it showed the distribution of Negroes in America. And surprisingly, the same senators that were involved in the filibuster were from the states where there were the most Negroes. Why were they filibustering the civil rights legislation? Because the civil rights legislation is supposed to guarantee voting rights to Negroes in those states. And those senators from those states know that if the Negroes in those states can vote, those senators are down the drain. The representatives of those states go down the drain. And in the Constitution of this country, it has a stipulation wherein whenever the rights, the voting rights of people in a certain district are violated, then the representative who rep who's from that particular district, according to the Constitution, is supposed to be expelled from the Congress. Now, if this particular aspect of the Constitution was enforced, why, you wouldn't have a cracker in Washington, D.C.